Hello everyone, Terry here with a 2000 Buick LeSabre. Uh, if you remember, we had an ABS, no traction light coming on. We had a tire message uh, light coming on for a low air pressure. That was on the right rear tire. We haven't seen that. We, be, we had a nail in the tire, had it fixed. So the message for the tire pressure hasn't came on. I've been driving the car every day to work. This is the wife's car and it has not acted up one time. So I haven't seen the ABS light pop on, no traction light, everything is doing good. So I thought I could take this opportunity and show you guys about how to check ABS sensors and um, give you a little bit of insight about how they work. And um, also we'll talk about bias voltage that's uh, put out here on the lines for the ABS sensors where the computer is used to check the integrity of the wires. And we can actually take advantage of that. So maybe I'm thinking we might have a loose connection here somewhere. So we're going to do a little bit of that. And hopefully you guys can learn something. One of the things that I feel really strong about is before you can really fix anything, you have to understand how does it work? How does the circuit work? Because you got to think about how are you going to put something back together to work if you don't even know how it works to start with. So what you're basically left with you just change your parts and then if that don't fix it then change another part and you have no idea why it fixed it or what was wrong so to start this off I'm, I'm thinking what we're going to do is we're going to talk about ABS sensors and how they work so you get a better understanding what goes on there we're going to look at the wiring diagrams we're going to see that we're going to correlate that we're going to match that up in the physical world so you can tie all this together and hopefully uh, you know, make it a little bit easier for you to troubleshoot some of this stuff. Okay, so let's get started. And the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, ABS sensors. All right. ABS sensors, there's two different types. There's one called passive, normally called, uh, you sometimes you'll hear them called VRS sensors. That's variable reluctance sensors. Uh, basically, reluctance meaning uh, the opposition to uh, a change in the magnetic field. It's a big fancy word, but just a, another name is a magnetic pickup. It's a passive device, meaning that it does not require any external voltage for it to work. In other words, there's really no electronics in there to power it up. Uh, this here passive sensor, this is what we have on this car. Uh, this is a, a, a sensor that will generate an AC voltage on its own. And we're going to talk a little bit about how does it work. Okay, well, let's get back to, say, Michael Faraday. Back in the 1800s, I forget exactly when, 1830s, I believe, they knew, the scientists and all knew back then that electricity made a magnetism. Michael Faraday came up with the idea, well, if electricity can make magnetism, can magnetism make electricity? And so what it boils down to is, yes, it can. This is basically how alternators and generators all this stuff works and actually the ABS sensor. Well look at here, I got a I got a magnet. And that is basically pretty much everything that's on an ABS sensor. The magnet, okay? Now here's a magnet and here's a wire. Alright? Now if I take this magnet and I take this wire and I just pass it, not hitting it of course, but if I just pass it right in front of it like this. I am generating a voltage, AC voltage, into this wire. Now, it's a very, very small voltage, but it's there. Now, if I take this here wire and put it around in a coil, then I put another wire, then the magnetic field or the voltage that gets induced, it gets coupled, and then I have increased my voltage. Okay, let's take that a step further. Let's take this here magnet, and let's just take this wire and let's just take and wrap it right around the magnet okay now there's a coil of wire wrapped around a magnet okay well guess what I've got there's your ABS sensor passive type okay so it needs one more thing to operate to generate this voltage now over here on the side and by the way the, this here particular car a lot of GMs and um, others out there, I'm sure. But the, the speed sensor is an integral part of the wheel bearing hub. So if you have a sensor problem, you're going to have to replace the whole wheel bearing. Okay, but getting back to this, there's a, there's a reluctor, which is a, like a sprocket with gears on it. It's also called a tone ring. 
Okay, if we can imagine that this is one of the tips of these here teeth that's on that sprocket. Now as the teeth, as the tooth is coming and approaching the very end of front of this magnet right here, and by the way, this will be called the pole piece. Now as it starts approaching, we're cutting into this magnetic field and disturbing it. Now in the process of doing that, we have disrupted the magnetic field and in that changing that magnetic field, we have induced a voltage over into this windings here. This voltage will start to rise and it will start to climb. Now as the closer the tooth gets to the pole piece, the center of the pole piece, then the voltage is going to start to drop. Then as it comes and gets right in alignment like that, now we pass through zero volts. And then as we are leaving and passing now, we're now we're switching polarity and going back into a negative direction. And as we go on through, then we go on up and down to the max peak and then we get back and basically for one tooth you're creating one cycle of an AC sine wave. So if you look at it on a scope, it'll look just like a sine wave. You got a positive going up, comes back through zero, goes down to maximum negative, comes back to zero, one cycle. So we're going to go over some diagrams next, so we're going to look at that. Now here's a wiring diagram for the four wheel speed sensors. Now we had a problem, say, on the right front sensor, okay? And like I said in the last week, it hasn't been doing anything. I drove the car every day to work, no problems. But, like I said, we're going to take this opportunity, we're going to go and check it. And this way, uh, you guys out there, if you do have a problem, then, then I can show you the methods of how to check this. Okay? So let's look at this here, left, the left, left hand front wheel speed sensor. Now if you look right there, you can see there's a little curly line going up, 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 right? Right on the bottom here. Well, that is your winding. That's your wire wrapped around the magnet. All right, now you see these two little two parallel lines? That means that the winding is wrapped around an iron core. The iron core in this case is going to be the magnet. Now here's the reluctor, okay? Now the reluctor here, as you can see, has a teeth. And as each tooth passes in front of the pole piece, which is the end of the magnet, then we're going to generate an AC voltage as each one of these teeth come around, okay? Now, we have two wires coming out. Now remember, these here wires are not being fed any voltage as far as to operate, but, they're, but I believe there is a bias voltage on here. Now the bias voltage is not for the operation of the sensor, it's only used by the computer to check the integrity of these wires to see if they're shorted to the ground, or if they're open. Now, let's follow it on down, follow it on down. Now let's see here, you got this right here, it says 0.5 black, well the black's pretty obvious, that means this here is a black wire. And then we have this 873. All right, let's go over here. 0.5 means the size of the wire. That's 0.5 millimeter. Of course, the black is the color of the wire. 873 is a circuit number, okay? Same thing over here, 0.5 millimeters. This is a white wire, and this one's on circuit 830. Now you're coming on down, you see this here little figure eight. Looks like an infinity symbol here. What that means is that these two wires are a twisted pair. Now you say, why are they twisted? Why are these wires twisted together? Well, the reason they're twisted together is to minimize the effects of picking up any outside interference. For, in other words, if wires are twisted together, imagine we have, a, we have a current coming down here, we have current coming down here, now we have a magnetic field over here, we have a magnetic field over here, we have the current coming down and then it's returning, right? So the magnetic field of this one is 180 degrees out of phase with this one. When you put these two together and they're crossed together, twisted, then what's going to happen is these two fields will cancel out each other. So the net effect is zero. So you don't have any voltage induced. Now when you have some other outside source coming in by these two wires being twisted together, it's going to be very little chance of these wires picking up any kind of outside inductive uh, pickup from you know outside sources. So that's what that means, twisted wire. Now you come down here, you see this S. This is a splice. Basically some point in the harness they have these things soldered together somewhere. Okay, now we come in on down and we see we go into 0.5 millimeter, a yellow wire, steel circuit 873. Now over here, 0.5 millimeter, it's a dark blue wire, 
on circuit 8 looks like 830 now you come down here now we got this box here now this box here when a box is dash it means that it is not showing you everything that's inside all of the pinouts that's on here we're not seeing them all there's a, there's another part of this circuit for other pins for other circuits other sensors that's coming into this electronic brake control module okay also known as the EBCM now let's look down in here you look right there and it says the connector ID now you can see it says C1 equals southern black well C1 is a connector number C1 that means it's got seven pins in this connector that means it's also the color is black okay now if you come over here all right you see the C2 C2 says okay 29 pins and it's got here NAT means it's a natural color or gray so it could be either one of these colors and we come over here and we look and we see C2 so now these here these are the pin numbers that's inside that's connected to this uh, this electronic brake control module okay now going back, let's look at this one right here, the same one we were looking at. We're coming down. Now we see that we have a signal wire right here. Okay, this is an input wire, and this is the signal return. Now this here return wire, okay, ground? No, not really. It's just a return. Remember, this is a this is a floating ground. This ground is not tied back to the uh, the negative side of the battery. Okay. Okay. Now let's correlate this, what we see on the diagram, to the real world. Alright, for one thing, here's a, here's a connector. When you see an arrowhead like that, that's the male side of the connector. When you see the, like the tail end of the arrow, like this right here, that's the female side. Now, we say that A is going to be a white wire, circuit 830. Okay, now let's slide over here and look at this. Now we got a diagram, okay. There's a diagram. This is the harness side of the connector. There's our A and B. And if we slide on down, we see that A is a white wire. Well, that matches up. Now we see this circuit 830. Let's slide back over here. See if it is. And it is white wire 830. And also, if we look over here, we got B, black wire 873. And that's also telling us the function which is matching up to this right down here. All right, so let's go to our connector. All right. Now here's our connector. This is on the harness side. This is the female side, okay? Now on the female side, let's take a look at it. We look at it in that orientation. Now if you look right up here, here's that tab. All right, let's put the tab up at the top like it shows, and then A should be on the left. And then A should be the white wire. Okay, so let's take a look at that. I have my connector. I put the tab on the top. Here's my A right here on the left. Now let's see if it's the white wire. So I flip it over, and I look. And it is, it's a little discolored, but it is a white wire, and the one over here on the right-hand side is a black wire, okay? So that, uh, that takes care of relating the information out here to the real world. All right, to keep this video short and to group it up, uh, for this, like this video, we want to do it as far as, uh, like the theory, you know, operation, the diagrams. Next video, we're going to actually be testing it. So we're going to do resistance checks. We're going to do um, we're going to do the voltage checks. We're going to look at the bias voltage, and so that'll be in the next video. Just want to thank everybody for watching. So you guys take care.